Melanie is going to be sharing with us. She, um, you guys all know Melanie. She's great. She does most of the work here. I just sit in the office and she does it. No, um, <laughs> she keeps us going. She really does. And I am so grateful for her and for having her on staff. And uh, she is going to be bringing the word to us this morning. I would just like to say a prayer this morning and then I'll pass it over to her. Father, um, we are thankful for another day to worship and bring you glory. Lord, I pray for um, the message this morning, as it comes from Melanie, that it would not be her words but yours, Lord, that she would be filling um, us with what you want us to hear, Lord, and that we would be willing to open our ears and listen and take something home. Lord, thank you so much for her willingness to come out and share when she's busy, Lord, that she never even hesitated, Lord. Thank you so much for the heart of Melanie. In your name, amen. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I know it's almost 10 minutes before noon, so I'm not going to be long, I promise. I'm going to, like, do it really short. Um, but as Pastor Kelly and Derek asked me to preach this Sunday, I was thinking, what can I preach about? And one thing that popped up into my head was a piece of scripture from the Old Testament that really stood out to me during my last year at Bible college. I had to do, I had took a class about the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible, and I chose Deuteronomy. And my teacher hadn't even gone through that book yet because we were running out of time, so I didn't even get to get the whole experience of the book of Deuteronomy. But uh, this chapter and this couple of verses specifically spoke to my life a lot, which transformed kind of like my life mission and like my way of thinking and my way of acting. So I just wanted to share that with you. Um, so we're going to go to Deuteronomy chapter 6, so right after the Ten Commandments, um, verses 4 to 9. So, yes, there you go. Okay, so just a quick little context right here. Deuteronomy, it's kind of the recap of all the other books, the first four books, and it's Moses' last speech. So this is before Moses pass away. So he's like, okay, guys, this is everything that has happened to, this is the new generation. So it's like everything that happened to all these other people who did not listen to what God had. So I'm hoping that giving this to you guys, you guys are going to do better. Um, so with all of that context, he starts saying, uh, hear o Israel, the Lord God, the Lord is one. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command to you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children and shall talk to them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way and when you lie down and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand and they shall be as, a f as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorsteps of your house and on your gates. I was reading from the ESV. Sorry if you have a different version. Um, so this that we just read, it's called the Shema. You can go to the next slide. Um, which is the Hebrew word here, because it, that's the first word that starts with, here or Israel. So the Shema basically means here. And for thousands of years, every morning and every evening, uh, Jewish people have prayed these well-known words as a way of expressing their whole devotion to God. Um, but Shema, besides meaning hear and listen, it involves a little bit more of an action. Um, it's like listening and obeying together. So when, someone, when, you, when you have told your kids, like, hey, are you listening? You're expecting them to not just hear your words, but to act upon them, Right? So the same thing that God is doing here with the Israelites. He's like, here, O oh Israel, I want you to not just listen to the sound waves that are coming out, but I want you to put this into practice. So Shema does not only mean to hear or to pay attention or to focus, but Shema includes a response, something that we're going to act upon what we have heard. So. Now I want to dissect real quickly the rest um, of the Shema. It starts with, Hear Israel, the Lord, our God, the Lord is one. So, just a quick test. What is the first commandment 
out of the Ten Commandments? Who can tell me? Yes, Karen. Yes. Yes, but not quite. <laughs> um, the first commandment is you have no other gods before me. So this first part of the Shema is basically referring to the and them that reminder of the exclusivity. I am your God, you are mine. You, I should be the only one that you should be worshiping. And God is coming back to this because right now the Israelites are not into the promised land, but they're going to get in there and they're going to be surrounded by these other pagan nations, the Canaanites and all these other people that have a bunch of gods that can definitely make them go other ways, right? So before they get to this point, he's telling them, hey, remember, I am the only God. I'm the only one that you should be serving. So it's reminding them of the authority that he has. Then we move on into, because he is the only God, he says, love the Lord your God. The word love, it's a very common word in the Bible, right? We read it so many different times. Um, but God loves us and loves the people of Israel not because they deserved it or because they earned it. It was simply because that's God's character, right? God is love. That's why in the book of Jeremiah, he says that God's love is everlasting. It has no beginning, no end. It's just there. Is his love there. Um, but God's love is also an action. He chooses, he chose to love the Israelite and he chooses to love us despite our sin, despite the way the many times we fail. So if God's love implies an action to choose us, as well our response to God's love should be to love in return. And here's where it comes that that part that is added, right? The, what's the second greatest commandment? To love your neighbor as yourself. That's where that comes from. Because if we, um, we're going to respond to God's love in love towards others and towards ourselves. The next part, it says, uh, love your Lord your God with all your heart. So fun fact, in ancient times, the Israelites did not know or had any idea how the brain connected with our body and all of those things and how that worked. So in their minds, the concept of the human intellect and the emotions and desires was all in the heart. So here, in this sense, then it's referring that we should devote all of who we are, including our desires um, and our failures and everything that we are to love God. Everything that comes from our minds should also come out of our hearts. Okay, next part is soul. And it says, love God with all your soul. The Hebrew word for soul, I'm, I'm not going to pronounce it correctly, but it's called nephesh, which means throat. So in the English, it wasn't translated that well, like soul, throat. Not really close, hey? But <laughs> the idea is because the throat connects everything that comes in to everything that goes inside you, right? So the idea of nefesh in, in here is kind of talking about the whole being, how like everything, the whole organism, the whole human being. So to love God with all our soul means to devote um, every part of our physical body to honor God and to serve him. It's about offering our entire being with all of its capabilities, limitations, in the effort to love God and to love our neighbor as ourselves. And the last part is to love God with all of our strength. When we think of strength, we think muscles, right? But that's not what he's referring entirely here. Um, the word uh, translated as might or strength in other translations uh, in here usually functions as an adverb, so it means like very or much. So to love God with all of our veriness, kind of, <laughs> or, 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 or muchness, doesn't make much sense. But is it the idea of loving God with every possibility and every opportunity that we have? It can be there by the smallest things, but the thing is to be able to do it with all of our being, just every opportunity that we have. And the last couple of verses that we read, it says, 
to uh, talk about them when you sit down, when you walk, when you lie down, when you get up, and all of this, and tie them um, as symbols in your hands. And I have a couple of pictures. If, there you go. That, that is called, I'm not going to pronounce it correctly, phylacteries and mesuzot. I don't really know how to pronounce that correctly, but that's, the, that's what Jewish people do for uh, keeping the Shema, basically. So they tie these things to their forearms, and they have that little box that you can see on the forehead, and in the box, it has that verse, like, love your God with all your heart, blah, 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 and all of that. And they just wear it in the morning and in the evening when they're reciting it. And then they also have the other thing, the mesuzot, which is usually the one that they put on the door frames and whatnot. Um, so they took it really literally when, when it said, put them on your forearm and your head. And I don't think it was, we were supposed to take it literally, but that's the way they're doing it. And the way that this is telling us is suggesting that we should follow this commandment in any place that we are, in anything that we're doing, anywhere, and with anyone that we're with. That should be just something part of our daily life, right? Loving our God with all of what we are. So, um, Jesus quoted the Shema in the New Testament, and I'm pretty sure you guys have read your Gospels, so you know what I'm talking about. So, out of the four Gospels, in three of them, he quoted the Shema, but I'm going to read from Mark 12, verses 29 and to 31. which I thought I had in here, but I do not. So let me look for it. Okay. And it's this. Um, Jesus answered, the most important commandment is, Hear, o Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the second, the second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these two. Wow. Okay, so what's the difference that you can tell between this verse and the other verse that we just read in Deuteronomy? There's like a slight difference. Can someone notice it? <laughs> Pastor Kelly? Yes! Good job! <laughs> the only difference is here that Jesus adds the with all your mind. Um, and why do you think it's like that? And I, I take it like it's the way for us to help us understand more deeply what this means. Um, mind and strength in the Hebrew are the same word, so it implies the same idea of veriness or muchness. Um, and it's kind of telling us that they're both human cap capacities, both human things that we can do, so that there are infinite ways that we can love God and infinite ways that we can do it. It's basically telling us that there is not a limitation to it, that there is multiple ways that we can do it. That there, so that's why I like the concept of worship. It's not just music, but it's what we do with our life. And it's in the same way that... It doesn't look a certain way to love God. There's many different ways to love God, and that's good. So coming back to the Shema. We are people that are called to love God with all of our heart, that is, with all of our will and affections, with all of our soul, that is, with our whole life and physical being, and with all of our strength, that is, with every possibility, opportunity, and capacity that we have to honor God. So this is my conclusion to come to an end. And I have just three questions for you to ponder upon us uh, this week or today. It's up to you. But um, my questions are, why are you giving authority to? M most of the times I feel like we let worries or fear or just any other circumstance that we're going to through take the place of God so we forget that he's the one in authority. We forget the first time, the first part of the Shema. 
Hear Israel, the Lord, your God is one. He's the only one, the only one who should be taken part in our hearts and in our minds. God wants our undivided attention, our undivided affection, our allegiance, a loyalty that starts with the heart. As we acknowledge his lordship, then our response to love God is going to be better. Second question is, are you serving Jesus with every single part of yourself? Because I know that sometimes through the week there are things that happen and you don't feel like you can wholeheartedly do things. And it's completely understandable. I go through that too. But that's why it's a thing that we have to choose to do every day, to love God. And that this falls into what the Jewish do every day, right? Every morning, every evening. And in my head, I think that they lost the point a little bit because if you are really listening to what God is telling you, you're not just going to do this every morning, every evening, but you're going to put that into action, which sometimes I cannot judge all the Jews because I don't know them, but um, they might be not doing it, right? Just doing this doesn't mean that you completely love God. You really have to do more than just repeating this every day. So my last question is, is your life being transformed by Jesus by doing this every day? Are, is your life being transformed? I cannot tell you how much this verse has impacted me and helped me try to choose every day to love Jesus at my lowest or at my highest. It doesn't matter where I am, but to choose to listen, to do what he's calling me to do and to love him with every opportunity that I have. My hope for this morning is that you, this is more of a reminder, I feel, because you know this, and I'm pretty sure you follow this, and you love Jesus with all your heart. I don't doubt it. So it's just a reminder for you um, to choose every day to love Jesus, no matter where you are, just to give it your all. Um, so I hope that this could be a challenge for you to be able to fulfill the Shema. And in, not just for you, also for me. I'm still learning. There's so many times that I really don't feel like I should be doing things in position of leadership or whatnot because I'm feeling so low. But I know and just reminds me, no, if you love me, that's more than enough. Just keep going. Um, and it's such a hard reminder. Sometimes I'm like, are you sure? And like I'm back and forth with Jesus. And he's like, no, it's okay. Just go for it. And so it's normal and it's okay to go through this. But we have to decide and to choose to love Jesus every day with all of our being. So thank you for listening, and may God bless you as you go into this new week. Um, and please be praying for us for VBS, that these kids can be open to receive Jesus and to learn about Jesus. Pray for Abby that's, and Pastor Kelly. They're going to be doing the skits. Um, we, yeah, we just appreciate your prayer over everything that's going to happen this week. And drink lots of water because it's a hot week. God bless you. <laughs>